Joining me now, Pennsylvania Congressman, House Foreign Affairs Committee member, and House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee member, Scott Perry. Congressman, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. I I'm curious about what you make of this breaking news overnight, and, and what do you think that these sanctions really mean against Senators Cruz and Rubio? Well, I, I don't think they mean anything over Senators Cruz, Rubio, or really any ele elected official. I mean, it's not like any of us are traveling to uh, Beijing to start a new business uh, in, in with the Chinese Communist Party. So. Uh, I'm not sure if they have any practical effect. Quite honestly, I, I think it's just a, a headline grabbing a move to distract attention from the fact that the Trump administration has been incredibly tough on the Communist Party of China, is continuing to be, and these senators and many others are outspoken about the long time human rights abuses and the fact that it's having traction here in the United States that no longer are Americans and American investors willing to underwrite the Communist Chinese Party's malign activity, not only in their own country, but across the globe. And the fact that, uh, uh, that we uh, continue to invest in Chinese companies and, uh, and the Chinese, Chinese, Chinese Party needs to end, I think that we're expecting another executive order from the president on that. And I think in anticipation of that, this is a move to distract well, and try and grab some but we, but still, we still have a trade agreement, though, in place, we should say, between the United States and China, even though tensions are running high. And, and I do want to say that, and I wanted to ask you about this, considering your committee memberships, that over the weekend, the State Department issued a new warning to Americans going to China, uh, traveling to China, if they do indeed, because they could face retaliation, they could uh, uh, face arrest in China. I mean, the rhetoric is really heating up here, but still we have this trade relationship that's still in place and is still pretty large and intricate, sir. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we need to try and maintain that trade agreement and any trade relationship we have. We, we, you know, the United States is the good guy, always has been in this in this scenario. But we also have to recognize and understand who the Communist Party of China is. And, and we have to separate that, unfortunately, from the Chinese people. But the reality is, is that there is a danger. Tensions are rising because of actions, whether it's in Hong Kong, whether it's in the United States with IP theft or, or data collection or what have you with the Chinese Communist Party. And we just have to realize and acknowledge that and then take actions well, in that regard. And, and TikTok. And, and so it's yeah. you know, a balance. Yeah. And TikTok, which all these kids are using, but all that data seems to be flowing straight to the Chinese military. Uh, Congressman, I want to bring in uh, my, my colleague, Maddie Doppler. She's got a question regarding China. Maddie? Yeah, so Congressman, I think that point that Cheryl just made about TikTok is really the important one. What's the American government going to do when it comes to responding to some of the alleged abuses in China? I mean, when it comes to defending uh, human rights violation, the Trump administration has been absolutely right to do so. But, you know, the the response from the Chinese government is really a toothless tiger. When it comes to commerce, it's a completely different story here. When it comes to TikTok, that apps, uh, apps that Americans are actually using and using for their own financial financial enterprises. Where do you think the balance lies for the American government to respond to what are some pretty serious allegations about uh, privacy concerns when it comes to those apps in China? The American government's unfortunately in this case just going to have to uh, continue to inform the American people and more likely than not I think it, there's a there's a, a coming end to Americans availability to TikTok. TikTok is just a thinly veiled app that of course like you said kids young people in America are using, but China's using to vacuum up, hoover up their uh, their data, uses uh, their microphones to listen to conversations, yeah. can turn, so yeah, can turn the uh, on. It, it, again, we have to just acknowledge, while we might like some of these products from China, they are very, very dangerous to our national security and, quite honestly, to our families. And yep. so uh, the, the, the United States government is going to have to take actions unless something changes dramatically in that space. I agree with you so much. That's, that's the kids out there in this country that have got to listen, Congressman. I do want to ask you about reports that China and Iran are entering into a pretty broad partnership. They're reportedly going to do sweeping economic and military agreements between them. This is all in the New York Times. What do you, what do you make of these reports that Iran and China are really starting to, to partner up, if you will? Uh, not surprising at all, and it shouldn't be surprising to anybody that the world's largest uh, exporter of terror and the Communist Chinese Party 
of, of China are teaming up. And we have to understand as Americans that China doesn't seek to get in a conventional war with us where we're shooting at one another. What they seek to do is, is economic warfare, and they're pretty effective at it because we, we love the things that they produce in many cases, and they're, they're going to uh, partner up with Iran in that regard because both of them have the shared interest of destroying the United States of America. Yeah. That's where American heads need to get to on this, whether it's investing, whether it's uh, downloading an app, or whether it's buying uh, local things at your, at your local store that are produced in China. Americans need to change their mindset, and COVID-19 has brought that into the forefront about how dangerous this can be. It certainly has, Congressman. I